Welcome to 4.2's Math Moment. Today's students learned more about 3D shapes um, and also looked at some that were not rectangles and squares. So they um, veered off from just rectangular prisms and cubes and looked at some more shapes. So we're going to look at a couple of examples today. On their homework, they're asked to identify the shape. So the name is not given on their homework. They have to come up with that on their own. So when they're looking at a shape, a way to identify it is to look at the shape that is on the bottom. So, on the bottom and the top, right? So the base of the shape, and in this case I'm looking at the top of it, but the same shape would be on the bottom, is a five-sided shape. So that's a pentagon. That's where I come up with this first part of the name, all right? Then I need to decide if it's a prism or a pyramid. We teach the students that a pyramid comes to a point, one point at the top. We think Egyptian pyramids, we, we give some real-world examples there, all right? But a pyramid comes to one point at the top. A prism has long sides, rectangular sides. So when I'm looking at this, I see that there are long rectangular sides. It's not coming to one tip top point. So that's why I, how I know that it's a prism, not a pyramid. So there's only two types of shapes there could be when you're working with 3D shapes, prism or pyramid. And then you of course have a cube and a sphere and all those others. But when you're working with these kinds of shapes, it can either be a pyramid or a prism. So this would be called a pentagonal prism because of the pentagon here and it has uh, the long rectangular sides. So then when I move on and look at the next um, shape, I see that I have a triangle on the front and the back. So my first part of the word is going to be triangle or triangular. And then I look to see, does this triangle, does it have a triangle at the bottom and come to one tip top point? If it does, that would be a pyramid. But this one doesn't. It has long sides that are rectangles. Because it has long sides that are rectangles, it's a prism. And then the last um, example that we have is a hexagonal prism. And it's a hexagonal prism because when I look at the top and bottom, all right, I see a six-sided shape. A six-sided shape is called a hexagon. All right, and then I look to see, does it have a hexagon at the bottom and then come to one tip-top point? Or does it have long rectangles that are stretching up or stretching across? In this case, it has long rectangles, so I know that it is a prism. All right, these can be tricky, but what I would encourage your student to do, at least if they get stuck with the pyramid and prism part, at least have them identify the base of the shape to get started on that problem before they ask their teacher for help. Example two, we're working with another rectangular prism. And the reason I'm going to show you this one today is because it's got a little bit of tricky wording where some of the formula is already done for the student and they have to figure out the other part. So we're going to look at it together. It says the base of a rectangular prism has an area of 25 centimeters squared. The height of the prism is 10. So what is the surface area of the whole prism? Well, to figure this out, I, I put a model here to help us visualize. So if I already know the base is 25, and I haven't done anything with the height yet, I know that I've taken care of the faces that do not have to do with the height. Okay, my height is here. How tall is it? That's 10. If I have this um, face, this long face here, is the same as what's underneath, the base. They're going to be equivalent of the same thing. I can't see the bottom, but I know that it's there because this is a 3D shape. If the base is 25, then I know that this top is also 25. It has an area, so that part's done. I don't have to figure out that face or this face down below that I can't see. I know that those are both going to be worth 25 and that there's two of them, so I'll have to add that into my formula. Now what I have left to figure out using the height and the width and the length is how much is this shape worth What's the area for that face? And what's the area for that face? So I know that even though I can't see the shape behind here, I know that there are two of these types of shapes because it's a 3D shape. So this face I'm going to have to multiply twice. And this face I know is also over here. Even though I can't see it, I'm working with the 3D shape, so I know I'm also going to have to double it. Kind of like our formula in 4.1, and like we're going to double this one because I know there's something on the bottom that is equivalent. So again, if you need to help your student visualize it, I like to pull at school, I like to pull out a rectangle, um, rectangular tri um, Kleenex box and have them look. 
this is the top, there's something on the bottom. This is the side, there's something on the side. And have them see that those are equal to each other, but there's two of them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and figure out what is the area of this fr um, front face and what is the area of the side face. Well, I know that the height is 10 on both of these. I know that the base of this problem, the area was 25. It doesn't tell me in this problem what exactly is the length and what exactly is the width. But I know that they took the length times the width to get 25. So I need to start thinking, okay, what, can, what two numbers can be multiplied together to make 25? Well, I know 5 and 5 are really the only numbers that can be multiplied together other than 1 and 25 that can make 25. So I'm going to assume that I'm working with fives here. I'm going to have a five as my length and a five as my width. All right, so now I have all the numbers that I need to figure out the face. I know that the height times the length would be 50, and I know that the height times the um, width would also be 50. So both of these faces are worth 50. And I know that I just need to multiply both of them by 2 in order to take care of this side and the other side. This front and what's on the back because there's two of each. This is my 25 from before that takes care of the top and bottom. And now I just need to double each of these. So 2 times 25 would be 50. 2 times 50 would be 100. 2 times 50 would be 100 again. And then I just need to add up 100 plus 100 is 200 plus 50 is 250. Now I'm working with centimeters in this case. And because I'm finding surface area, I'm going to square my units. Now you might be thinking, well, Mrs. Green, this doesn't seem quite to scale. If this is 5 and this is 10, we just use this rectangle as a model to give you a visual to help you see. This wouldn't actually be the problem that you would use um, on a homework assignment. All right, if you have any other questions, ask your teacher.